Hey guys, welcome to the James Bond Show. I'm your host, Crazy Kid GV, the bad boy of James Bond with no fears, limits, or substitutes. And I am back tonight with a good little show. Now, as you guys know, I've been doing my top 10 list, so tonight I am doing my top 10 pre title sequences. Now, I'm a bit of a genius, I must say. <laughs> Not really. But I realize, guys, there's no point in giving honorable mentions at the top of the show because then that just ruins the fun because you know then my honorable mentions are not in my top 10 list so I'm not going to give any honorable mentions until the end of my top 10 so starting with top 10 my favorite James Bond pre-title sequence okay so at number 10 is number 10 is Spectre. Okay, Spectre, so 2015, Daniel Craig's back, and we've got an epic PTS. The reason this is in my top 10 is, it actually used to be in my kind of top three. I thought it was, used to think it was absolutely stunning. I still do. I think it's visually stunning. I hate to think how many millions they spent on this. The costumes, the extras, costuming the extras, feeding the extras. Then you've got the Red Bull helicopter, the Red Bull pilot. You've got the city pretty much, you know, this whole section of the city shut down for this film. It is incredible. The one big long tracking shot, of course we know it was four cuts, but that is stunning. The building coming down on Bond, the whole costume he's wearing, the skeleton costume is amazing. He falls on the couch when the building collapse. It's classic Bond. And then he's in a punch on with Marco Schiara and the helicopter pilot in a helicopter. I think it's a great introduction for Spectre. It led a lot into the film to be excited by. So Spectre is at my number 10. My number nine is another Daniel Craig PTS. My number nine is Skyfall. Now, I've watched Skyfall recently because as I think I've told you guys, I have. I'm building a diorama of the opening PTS in Skyfall with the motorbikes on the rooftops of the Grand Bazaar. So I rewatched Skyfall's PTS and I enjoyed it a lot. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And yes, it is kind of like a babushka doll of this, then this, then this, and it, you know, it goes along into stages. And I like it. And it's very entertaining. It's very riveting. So Skyfall is at my number nine. So my number eight. My number eight, guys is I wish I could have this higher because I actually do love it I think it's it's one of my it's weird it's at my number eight but I it's probably a PTS that I can watch over and over and I've probably watched more nearly as much as my number one and that is for your eyes only PTS Roger Moore's back he's hanging off a helicopter as Blofeld has got got it well Blofeld the man that can't be named but we all now know it's Blofeld we all knew when we first saw the film it was Blofeld there's great stunts here so Bond's hanging off a helicopter that Blofeld has got the remote control for he's executed the pilot Bond chucks him out Bond has to take control of the helicopter there's incredible Derek Manning's model miniatures here, when you see the helicopter going into the building, it's part of a foreground model miniature and it all looks amazing and blends so well. But, yes, this PTS is kind of ruined by the terrible line from Blofeld. Mr. Bond, Mr. Bond, I will buy you a delicatessen in stainless steel. If this had been played really seriously, like most of the film, and James Bond, you know, John Glenn let Roger Moore's Bond be a vicious bastard. And like he reaches his hand out, grabs Blofeld's neck, and pulls him in towards a helicopter uh, windscreen there and says, this is for Tracy. Boom, and drops him down. That would have been incredible. And I think this PTS, if they brought more of that Tracy element into it, considering Bond goes to Tracy's grave in the opening of this pre-title sequence... I believe that would have just elevated this sentimentally because it's visually beautiful, it's edited beautiful, the music's fantastic as well. I just think it would have brought it to that next level, but it isn't my number eight. So my number seven. My number seven is Moonraker. 
Now, Moonraker, obviously, it has uh, beautiful model miniature effects work where the Moonraker shuttle flies off the back of a... Uh... <laughs> Mr. Winston has just entered the room, everybody, so beware. So, the, heli the Moonraker shuttle goes off the back of uh, a, a big 747 aircraft and blows that up. The model miniature work here is fantastic. The music also by John Barry in this moment is great. And then we cut to, we end up cutting to James Bond. We don't know where he is, and they've filmed this really well. We don't know where he is, because he's just kissing this hostess. It kind of looks like he's in a plane. Then we go to a wide-angle shot, see this beautiful plane coming up, and Bond's inside the plane. Gets in a fight with the pilot. Uh, pilot ends up getting turfed out. He's got the parachute. Bond doesn't have one. And Jaws out of nowhere, rocks up, pushes Bond out of the plane. And then Jaws goes after Bond. Bond's going after the pilot, wrestles the pilot's parachute of him. I'm sure you all know the story there. Now, it's great. The stunt work's great. It's fantastic. However, the big issue with this for me is the editing, the rear projection of having Richard Killer's Jaws, and then the editing. And I watched it today. I actually watched the entirety of Moonraker today because I love the film and I can watch it over and over. But the pre title sequence to this day does my head in. I just think they should have done a lot more there and had a, uh, either a stuntman or someone that just resembled uh, Richard Kilmore. But when they cut, they're literally cutting to like what's called medium wide angles and they got the stuntman going like this, like he's flapping his arms and it's clearly just not Richard Kill. It's like they're so into it and over it's like ah, they're not even trying to disguise him. And then they cut to a close up of Richard Kill and he's not nothing's moving in the background there's no sense of falling and you can see it's, it's Richard Kill, completely different person so and then he falls into a circus big top now I know it's fun and it's great laughs it really is Wally e. Coyote this is Wally e. Coyote it's Roadrunner versus Wally e. Coyote Bond's a Roadrunner Jaws is Wally e. Coyote and he lands down on a big top 10 so it does get ruined. This probably could have been one of the greatest PTS, but the humour in it and how stupidly it's done kind of hurts it a little bit. But I still love it. It's still very exciting. So that's at my number seven. My number six is a short, sharp, boom, 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 chop socky one on Her Majesty's Secret Service. The end line where George Lazenby's James Bond says right to the camera, apparently breaking the fourth wall, saying, this never happened to the other fella, doesn't bother me. I've always loved it. Now, one of the excuses is... And it came from director Peter Hunt that Bond is kind of talking about... He's been like Prince Charming talking about Cinderella because he's holding up a shoe. So it's like, this never happened to the other fella. Of course, we know, hidden joke, he's talking about Connery's Bond. So if you look at it in the context of this never happened to the other fella with the slipper Cinderella Prince Charming, it works. It works. Either way, it's a great opening. The way... Bond is hidden, kind of in shadows. We see close-ups of the mouth. We see him, you know, grabbing. Uh, he's lighting up his uh, cigarette. Uh, he's got the glasses, etc. He's got the hat. And then he pulls over. He sees Tracy about to drown herself. The editing's a bit off. One minute they're in the water and he's drowning him in water. And then next minute there's no water. So, yeah, the editing's a bit off. But that's... Small and nitpicky. The editing's also brutal, fast and exciting and ruthless. And I love it. And honestly, every time I watch this PTS, it gets my bing, bing, bing radar going off. Bing, 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 bing. I love it. So if you guys don't love this PTS, get off the crack. It is a ripper. So Auto Majesty Secret Service at my number six. My number five is, and I saw this six times at the cinema, GoldenEye. The GoldenEye pre-title sequence. This is kind of like a Barbushka doll as well. We see Bond running along. This is a great introduction for Pierce Brosnan. Stretches out like this, jumps off the dam, incredible bungee jump, breaks into the uh, Archangel Chemicals weapon facility of the USSR, gets in there, meets up with 006. Uh, 006 ends up getting uh, shot dead, well, supposedly by General Uramov. Bond sets a timer for three minutes instead of six. He has to escape. He ends up shooting these barrels. The barrels come down. Boom. I love the way this is executed. 
It is directed beautifully by uh, Martin Campbell. The music by Eric Serra here, I think, is really fantastic. I actually love the music in, in this uh, pre-title sequence. Bond ends up outside the base, and yes, it doesn't kind of make sense. He goes down with the bungee jump, then they go up, up, up a few levels, and then he goes down, and then he's out on like a bottom of a cliff type thing, or has to go over the cliff on a motorbike. So Bond goes over the cliff on a motorbike, chasing an aeroplane, while General Orimov and the other baddies sit there and go, ooh, you know, they're just looking like this. But it's so funny. Orimov at first says, wait, wait, like Bond's going to turn around and go, yeah, yeah, I'll just wait for you guys to come and capture me and shoot me. Now, some people bag this pre-title sequence because of this the section where Pierce Brosnan's coming down by the side of the plane and getting in it. They think the CGI or visual effects aren't great here. I like it. I think it's great. Sure, even Derek Mennings, um, this was his last model miniature work he did for the James Bond films before he sadly died before the film was released. And you can see even in the explosion, you can see the scales a little bit off of the model, but it still all works. It's fantastic and it's a great introduction for Pierce Brosnan. So it's just a great PTS and it's another PTS that I can just watch over and over as well. Okay guys, number five, probably one of the quickest, shortest, sharpest and considered best today pre-title sequence pre-title sequences ever. 1964's Goldfinger. This is how you do a pre-title sequence without blowing the budget. And Casino Royale pre-title sequence did the same thing. They gave us a very good pre-title sequence without blowing the budget. So sometimes it can just be small, sharp, and exciting. So Bond coming up out of the water with a pigeon on his head, takes a pigeon off, jumps over the fence, kicks a guard in the head, goes into this um, like cocaine facility, blows up these barrels, goes out, undoes his uh, wetsuit. He's got a freaking white tuxedo with rose, carnation, whatever there as well. Goes into a bar and comes out with one of the best lines ever in all of the James Bond franchise. Or at least you won't be shelling, shelling hell and flavoured bananas. It's a great line, and I butchered that with my very bad Connery impression. But it's a great line. It's a great intro to that film. And of course, just before it finishes, Bond gets in a fight. He goes in to kiss his girl. Sees a baddie in her reflection of her eye. Gets in a fight with this guy. Throws him into a, like a Cuban assassin. Throws him into a bath. The guy's about to grab James Bond's gun and shoots him that's hanging above the bath. So Bond quickly smashes the electric heater into the bath, electrocuting him. And Alf Joint, the stuntman, wasn't supposed to do that stunt. It was supposed to be another stuntman, but that stuntman had just been caught for being a cat burglar. Actually, being a criminal, he got caught, he got off to jail, so Alf Joint... Elf Joint got to do it on the day and, and be the actual character as well as do the whole fight. And Elf Joint actually did get electrocuted. Uh, he really got badly burnt, but he kept going because they were filming. And it ended up later seeing that he got very badly burnt. So when you see that scene and he's in pain, he's not faking it. That is him in agony because he actually got uh, burnt in there. Okay, guys, so my number three. So we're down to the final three. Now, this is going to cause some controversy. The Spy Who Loved Me is at my number three. I know it's traditional to say this is the greatest PTS. As you guys know, Crazy Kajimi here, I don't go with the crowd. I'm not a sheep. Meh. I'm not going with the crowd. I go with what I love. Now, my favourite part of this pre-title sequence, there's a couple of things, but my favourite part is the actual ski chase. So it's not the fact that, yes, we see one of the greatest stunts, one of the most famous stunts of all time, particularly because of the way it was filmed. The other cameras weren't working. They picked him up with this long wide angle shot that panned all the way down with him. And yes, it's fantastic and it's exciting. But to me, that's not what makes this PTS the best. If he had come out of the lodge, got down the thing, the guys chased him, gone down the cliff and he skis off, it would have been so-so. It's the actual skiing sequence done by Willy Bogner and set up by Willy Bogner which is amazing and the Russians are chasing Bond, Bond flips, flies through the air, skis backwards, shoots a bad guy with his ski pole gun, it is awesome. And the production design is great with the little, um, with the hut that he's in, the wooden cabin that he's in, the lighting is all beautiful there but then we see Bond in this like 
ultra bright yellow outfit, so the costume design is great as well. Everything goes, and Marvin Hamlish's uh, Bond 77 theme is one of my favorite themes of all time in any movie. I love it, and it's great, but it's at my number three. So my number two, my number two is, I'm going to show you here, this is my number two PTS of all time. I just think everything about it works, well almost. Octopussy, pre-title sequence with the Acrostar mini jump jet, and I showed you guys this last night in my, or yesterday in my vehicles. So the Acrostar mini jump jet, this pre-title sequence is amazing. I love the way it's filmed, I love the way it's set up, I love the music in it, uh, the sound design is great, the Acrostar Mini Jump Jet just sounds brilliant. They did it with a great blend of model miniatures, rear projection, it's live action, it's so good and it's fun and inventive. So Bond goes in and basically he's trying to blow up this base. Uh, disguised as a General Toro, the real General Toro and his crooks catch Bond. Bond gets put on a Jeep, here's the weak point here. Here's this guy that's supposedly trying to blow up this base. He's now on a Jeep in Cuba with two guards that aren't Cuban and for no reason at all. They're wearing parachutes and he's not even handcuffed. So yes, that is a bad part about the pre-title sequence, but it doesn't matter because at the end of the day, it's all about the big fun and action. Bond escapes, uh, there's Hot Babe with him too, she's gorgeous, Bond escapes, he gets into the back of this horse cart, the horse's ass comes up, the thing all opens up, and out comes the Acrostar mini jump jet, and it gets chased by a missile, and the stunt work, the action, everything here, the special effects, the visual effects, it's great, and then of course Roger Moore finishes off, he runs out of petrol, turns up to a servo, and finishes it off in typical Roger Moore, awesome style, Fill her up, please. So it is my number two. Now, my number one, guys. Let's have a bit of theme music right here. My number one James Bond pre-title sequence is The Living Daylights. Yep, that's right. The Living Daylights, when we see James Bond and two other double O's. I believe from memory it's 004 and 002. And there's the little Land Rover Series 3, and you can see that's a little James Bond there, Timothy Dalton. And you can see the bad guy in there. See him in there? And so they're going down to basically get inside the uh, weapons installation in Gibraltar. They've got to get in there. It's kind of like a, um, a paintball operation. They're using paintball. But there's a bad guy down there um, who's supposedly carrying out smeat, spionum, death to spies. And he's disguised as one of the guys taking place in this uh, exercise. But he's a real bad guy. He ends up killing two of the agents. And then we see one of the, probably the greatest introduction other than Sean Connery in Dr. No. The second best introduction to a James Bond. Camera moves in and Timothy Dalton turns around. And it is just cool, because Timothy Dalton is cool. And I'm so glad this was not Pierce Brosnan. And no offense to the Brosnan fans out there, he was great in Goldeneye, and I love Goldeneye, like I said before, the PTS is one of my favorites. But if he turned around and it was Brosnan, it just wouldn't be the same. We see this ruthless bastard turn around, you know, but he's good looking, and he's suave and cool. He gives chase. He gets on top. He jumps on top of this Land Rover. And the great thing here is Timothy Dalton did most... He basically did his own stunts. Now, of course, I believe from memory it was Paul Weston who did some of the stunts as well. Now, the actual Land Rover, when you see this uh, making of this, at the end of the making, you see the Land Rover flip. So the Land Rover, as it was driving along, the thing rolled and flipped and Paul Weston jumped off it. So if that had been Timothy Dalton on there, would he have been able to jump off properly, roll off? Because obviously Paul Weston was so trained to do that kind of stuff. So it was incredible. I think it was Paul Weston, guys, from memory. If it wasn't, it might have actually been... Sorry, guys. I think it was actually Simon Crane. Sorry. I think it was Simon Crane that did this stunt. I'm pretty sure it was Simon Crane. So apologies there. 
But Dalton gets up there as much as possible to the uh, chagrin or the disgust of Albert Cubby Broccoli when he found out. Because obviously, you know, it's a big insurance risk. Imagine if the star gets killed and they're making this movie and, you know, yeah. But the scene is great. And not only is the stunt work great, the cinematography great, but what pumps it along, what pushes it, is probably, arguably, one of... John Barry's best musical scores, the music in dun, 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 it is just so good. It just pushes along, and yeah, everything mixes well. And then the so Bond's on this thing. He headbutts him. Once he headbutts the bad guy, we see you know this Bond's a badass. Then the uh, Land Rover goes off a cliff. Bond escapes, kicks this guy, kicks a back window, gets out, hits a parachute, he flies out, Land Rover blows up, killing the bad guy, Bond lands on this boat with a kind of typical 80s hotty toddy, kind of yummy mummy, and she's sick of um, tennis pros and playboys, she wants a real man, and here comes Dalton. Love it. It is my favourite. When we did a um, we did a poll, and if you haven't come and joined us, guys, on Facebook, on Real James Bond Fans, come and join us. When we did a poll on that, uh, out of all the pre-title sequences, I think we've done two. And The Living Daylights won. So, universally, it has now, I think, replaced uh, the Spy Who Loved Me PTS, PTS, and The Living Daylights has got number one. Guys, I would love to hear what you think. Please let me know in the comment section below what you think. Let us know your number 10. Don't be lazy, and I'm talking to you, Robert Harvey. I'm talking to you, everyone else. Leave your comments, let us know. Please like, if you've liked what you've seen here, give us a thumbs up. Please subscribe and tap that bell for notifications as well. And guys, my next list coming up is my top 10 James Bond Henchman is coming up in my next edition. Till next time, guys. Do all that fun, crazy, Kajibi stuff with liking and subscribing. And keep on bonding and say hi to your mum for me.